Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday, you guys. Colin, how are we doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. I miss Donnie's welcome to Friday. <laughs> At, so that's funny. Adam usually does the overlay thing. So it took me a second. Right as we were starting up, I was like, crap, I got to take us off the stream and then play the overlay so that we can get the whole thing going. Now, that was pretty funny. <laughs> welcome, guys, back You know, to another Friday Fuel. Like I said, we're very excited today to get this going. We're going to be talking kind of about you know, systems and, you know, how you use it in your business and how it can help benefit you moving forward. Because as Colin, as we know, a lot of insurance agents, you know, struggle, um, you know, throughout their week to week and day to day, really getting clients, maintaining clients and even building their business. So we kind of want to give them some key tips. And I guess you could say tricks as well or systems in place to help build their business and everything that they have going. But before we start with that, Colin, I want you to give us one win from your week this week, bro. Hmm, dude, one win. I mean, personal, my uh, youngest son started walking last night. So, yeah, okay. he started just out of nowhere, dude. Like, he hasn't, like, shown any signs of walking. All of a sudden, last night, just walked all the way across the whole entire living room. And that is like, so hey, cool, bro. Bo, what's up, dude? Like, what, where'd that come from? So, Man. that was a lot of fun. And then... More so a win um, from this last month. I didn't quite hit my goal, um, but I was close to averaging about two two sales a day, um, which is what I'm wanting in um, outside of open enrollment called lock in. So right. for for Medicare plans, because if you can do that, dude, you're writing, you know, you're you're, you're adding a, a good amount of money. <laughs> I don't say gonna make Alexander. <laughs> I swear, dude. I kid you not. I've said it before. Colin has got some of the cutest kids, bro. Sorry to all the dads out there, but Colin's son Bo and his. Uh, what's your other son's name? Ma Maverick. Maverick. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. Gets me some baby fever, bro. <laughs> so, but with those, dude, yeah, let, let's hear your wins. You you posted a pretty huge win yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So before I get to that, I want. Cause I know you're doing mainly Medicare here. Are, were those two sales, were they, were those Medicare life? What were they? Like 90% of them were Medicare, but I cross sell life too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was mainly, mainly Medicare. Nice, so. bro. Yeah. I, I genuinely think, and you can agree with me on this. I think a lot of people miss out with cross selling too, bro. It's always there and people just don't do it. So I mean, yeah. but yes, my weekly win. So it wasn't even actually yesterday, Colin. My weekly win was with my dad on Monday. Okay. My weekly win was with my dad on Monday. We obviously it was from a seminar, right? And the seminar we, we hosted this one. What was it? Not. So it was last Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the, the past Tuesday. So two weeks ago. And, um, we obviously throughout the seminar, we scheduled some appointments and obviously we got to get calling him PNC baby. And That's then, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, we scheduled an appointment. This wasn't even our guy that we scheduled it that day. We followed up with him. So this follow-up game is so, so crucial. We followed up with this guy, booked an appointment with him on Monday. And um, my, matter of fact, this seminar was actually three weeks ago. We had, Me and my dad sat down with this gentleman one time. He has like four or it was almost $500,000 in this IRA. And then he has a Roth IRA as well. And then off the first sit, he wanted to go do his homework. You know, my dad put it out, me and him put it out, everything to him, how his product that he's in now, 
isn't going to be as good as the product he will be in, you know, right now if he made the decision, right? Yeah. So he went yeah. to go do some homework or whatever. And he came back to my dad saying, you know, I, I love the, you know, I, I did some research. I love the sound of this. Um, I want to meet with you guys again. Um, so we actually already scheduled a second meeting. My dad made sure we scheduled a second meeting after, you know, the, um, the whole uh, first meeting just to yeah. make sure we have it in the books. You know what I mean? Because if you leave and then you got to keep following up with this guy again, he could get kind of annoyed. So he confirmed that appointment on this Monday, sat down with them, ended up rolling over five or right at $500,000 on Monday, bro. Woo. I'll so end the one annuity. What's that? I'll end the one annuity. Um, so he had an IRA and a Roth IRA. So we did two separate annuities. Um, one was four, almost four thirty, and then the other one was four step or not four seventy. Sorry, four, one was four thirty, and the other one was seventy. So yeah, bro, <laughs> it's crucial, and that's yeah. something I want to jump into today. I'm trying to get this Instagram live going here, but um. Very, very crucial, guys, that we have systems in place. Another thing is me and Jeff yesterday wrote a $300,000 annuity um, just from sitting down with these people from these seminars. I'm going to break down the whole strategy for you guys and how you can perfect this and everything, bro, because it's really, really crucial, right? We yeah. had a – this is all follow-up game now. The the annuity that I told you, me and Jeff, that was almost a million-dollar one. We yeah. Had, People again, they had life insurance policies, but they didn't know where they were at off the first sit. What we ended up doing was we ended up um, making sure that they had all their policies. So we waited until they had all their policies. Then we sat down with them. They had legit like like seven policies between the two, the husband and wife. They were paying, the wife was paying like 400 something. The, the, the husband was paying like what? He was paying like two or 300 as well. And these were term policies that were getting ready to term out within the next four to five years, right? So we will obviously, I obviously wanted to make sure that we took care of them, right? And yeah. what to do. So then what I ended up doing, me and Jeff looked at their policies, ended up writing them two whole life policies, and then we wrote a term on the on the husband. So we had two whole lives and then a term on the husband, and then the husband had a whole life as well. That was sixty nine hundred dollars in AP from me and Jeff between the two of us. So. I mean, dude, talk about a game-changing win this week, too, bro. So yeah, dude, that's freaking sweet. That's a that's a huge week. Way to close out the month, dude. Oh so, my goodness. Question for our viewers: Are all of these coming from your white glove um, seminars, or are these referrals from current clients? Where are you Great finding question. these people? Yeah. So most majority of these are coming from the the seminars within themselves. So. You know, breaking down the whole seminar, every single point that we set, we have our fact finder. I got it right here. I'll show you guys. We have our fact finder, right? So we have the name, address, all the personal info right here. Then we'll go over the medical, even if they're coming for taxes and retirement, right? So they're yep. coming over the whole, you know, uh, estate, trust, wills, 401ks, IRAs. But then we'll even touch on the Medicare in itself because why not go over that? Yeah, that, that's part all of these retirement. people are Medicare age. Yeah, right? it's part of retirement. So then... Then we'll jump to the ancillary. So if you got dental or vision, cancer coverage, long-term care coverage, hospital indemnity, then we'll go over the life insurance side. And then you got the retirement income. And then you got like real estate CDs, expenses every month, IRAs, 401ks, and annuities. So we'll go over that whole nine yards of pretty much their whole retirement. And then boom, just like that, we have it. Plus, what's cool about this, Colin, is you're going to get referrals from all these clients too. So the referral strategy that I processed out to everybody you're going to even get referrals from every, you know, all these clients that you're sitting down with too. So, and most friends are pretty similar in, you know, um, income and what they have, right? Because maybe a buddy from yeah. work, because their 401 case I've been building, that buddy from work has a 401k too, right? So just the compounding of all these referrals is really, really game changing too in itself, you know? Yeah. Um, no, that's huge. So is that form, you're filling it out in your first sit or you're having them fill that out at the seminar say that one more time that form that you filled out your intake form oh right here the, the is, fact the fact finder. yeah 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 the fact finder is are they filling that out 100 percent of scam are they filling that out at uh at the seminar or are they filling that out are you filling it out for them basically in the first yeah sit? great question so what we'll have is i don't have the little actually i do have the slip right here with me i need to Okay, so once we're done with the seminar, this is a great question, Colin. When we're done with the seminar, we'll have them fill this out. Okay, it's a how, to, how did we do, right? So the first one's going to be um, 
um, I think this event was poor, fair, good, or excellent, right? The location was uh, the the location choice was good, poor, fair, good, excellent. Then you would say, or then it says, I would like to attend another event like this, maybe, definitely, or no. Then right here we have, would you like a complimentary review? So obviously, if they mark yes to that, then they're open to sitting down, right? Yeah. I've even booked people that have had said that, and then we we that haven't said that they want an appointment, we still book them, right? It's all about after the seminar going up to all these people and making sure that you book these appointments, right? And then I have the client's info on the back, but I won't show that. There's no point in that. And then, um, you know, it said, did you did you like the ad that we presented on Facebook for you? You know, what before the seminar in itself? So. Yeah. I, I want to know the same thing as Joe. What's the worst uh, worst slip you've ever had someone fill out? Did they say that young guy sucks at presenting? Like honestly, uh, that's a good question, Joe. I don't think. We ha- <laughs> no, we, we never had. We've never had like a, a crappy slip. We we've gone over all of them. There hasn't been one you know shitty slip in the whole thing, honestly. So. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah. Joe, bro. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I talked with you and your dad, you know, this last week or two weeks ago, however long ago that was, about your annuity seminars, man, because you guys are, are absolutely killing it. And so mm-hmm. you definitely have good systems. Oh, yeah. Um, so with that, you. oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Before we I, I just had one more question for you. Okay, One go more for question it. on the annuities. Okay. So let's say they mark that they're not interested in a complimentary review. Do you guys have a CRM that you, because if they wrote down at least their information or you get their information from White Glove, do you have a CRM that then you're plugging them into that slowly drips them so that it's like, okay, yeah, we can, you know, you'll eventually get them. You'll close maybe one out of 50 more because of that. Right. So what we'll do, Colin, it's a great question as well. The people that aren't interested and if they didn't, if they told us that they weren't interested at the meeting in itself, at the seminar, we'll make sure um, we have an AI drip through the white glove in itself. So white glove has their own CRM, right? And um, they'll have their own CRM. So the people that are interested, we'll just let the white glove AI follow up with all of them. Oh, nice. Okay? So even if they're not interested, you know, if the AI is blown up, they're like, well, damn, dude, I'm just going to go ahead and knock this out because these people are annoying the hell out of me, right? And they're they're just going to go ahead and try to just book the appointment and just see what happens, right? We've had that before, right? But the people that even we've talked to that were at the seminar that never gave us a non-interested, right? Obviously, we're going to try to talk to them. If they give us a non-interested over the phone, we're still going to follow up with them again probably a week after, just considering that they could maybe change their mind or something else could have happened that they may have this open-ended question that we need to go ahead and talk with them and sit down with them. Right. Yep. So I definitely want to go into like the full seminar in itself. I know I, we were kind of talking about it a little bit, but Colin, I want to jump to you real quick with okay. your business and how you are, dude, you're freaking killing it too, bro. So, I mean, how, how many Medicare? I just need to get these high ticket sales, man. <laughs> Med- well, Medicare, is, Medicare is slow, but I need some freaking 30 K annuities. coming. <laughs> Dude, th- th- these renewals for you, bro, are going to start kicking in, dude. It's got to be badass for you, bro. So my question is, what are what's Colin doing to get – how many apps did you have during AEP? Um, I was close to 200. Dude. So – That's And that was with zero marketing dollars spent. So you're going to have to go ahead and tell us how you did that because zero marketing dollars spent, that makes no sense. How, yeah, how, how I didn't Colin spend any money on mailers. I didn't spend – yeah, I didn't spend a single penny. So were these all were these all first timers, or no? Um, majority were. Yeah, not not is like T sixty fives, but yeah, a lot of them were, were first time on a it, Medicare Advantage plan. Does that pay you six hundred or six fifty? So with the health assessment, it pays. Some carriers pay like six fifty, some like six seventy five. Okay. So yeah, depending, well, like six. I mean, that in itself, pay. even if you had a couple people that you rewrote. I mean, that's over a hundred grand, bro. Yeah. Yeah. In, like, in renewals. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. Like I'm not, I'm not mad. Of course, it, my whole thing, the, the reason why I'll kind of do a little backstory on me. So I did door to door sales, um, was good at it. I liked it, but it was like, okay, I have to work to be able to make money, you know, moving your family out every summer for, for four or five months. Um, that wasn't sustainable and I wanted to get residual income. Like I knew that eventually it's just like, Hey, I want to build something. And it's just like, dude, 
I don't care if I'm in the Poconos or if I'm on my family farm, like whatever I'm doing, I want to just be making money no matter what. And then that's when I came across Medicare. And so it's just like, dude, like this is, this is the ticket. Cause if you do like 240 apps, 200, let's say 250 mm-hmm. for six years, you're making $450,000 a year, no matter what, like that's and, not and look, that much, dude. Yeah. And, and you can say some of the business could even fall off the book, bro. You're going to at least yeah. even, if you lose a fourth, man, you're sitting at at least 300,000, bro. Yeah. Net, net increase of 250. So yeah, you're going to have people die. You're going to have people move. Um, but yeah, if you can have a net increase of 250, that's, you know, about one a day, like, dude, you're, you're making more than a doctor. Like, yeah. And then, yeah, you throw in some annuities, you throw in some P and C, you know, you throw in some, (laughs) (laughs) you throw in some life insurance sales and and you're doing all right. Like me and me and Mason, my, my business partner, we were talking and he's got some family that are um, going into like the, the medical field. So anesthesiology, literally 12 years of school. And his cousin just graduated. Jeez, a mill a month. See that? That's some. That that those are some numbers I like. Um, that's that's nice, Joe. Good shit, dude. So we we need to get with Joe. Um, <laughs> but on the um, so this my my business partner's cousin just graduated. Um, he has like one point two million dollars in debt. And like now, yeah, of course he's going to be making probably around seven, seven fifty, um, as an anesthesiologist. Right. But he's like donating plasma. He's like still doing like every time he drives home, he does an Uber eats, he picks up and like drops off an Uber eats just so he can like pay off his student loans quicker. Right. It's like, dude, you can get into insurance and in 12 years, like you could be making $750,000 in renewals with zero debt you don't even and need a degree like, yeah you don't need a degree dude you go get you you, you pass the test in two weeks it took me like three months because i'm stupid but you could still do it so if i could do how, it how many times did it take you to pass it uh health it took me three times life it took me twice wow it dude took i me suck tests. at taking tests like i would i dude yeah do it faster than 12 years so <laughs> Dude, it so, took yeah. me legit. It took me for uh, four tries to pass it, bro. Four? Yeah, I'm the worst test taker, bro. I'm worse than you, I promise. No bro. way. I, no I, way. Just, I, just, I wasn't focusing either, dude. It, it was like my brain me was all. Over yeah, mine was during COVID. We just had Mav, and so I was just like, my mind was everywhere. <laughs> took took Joe four times too. Oh, geez, life and health first time. Sheesh, smarty pants. So yeah. Anyways, but with these systems, I'll answer your question on that. Um, how I got a lot of these clients. So if you're in the health space and if you don't have relationships with the carrier reps, meaning so each, so Blue Cross, United Healthcare, Humana, they have reps who are over your region. Okay. And if you aren't going to lunch with these people and like telling them your business plan so that you can get money to be able to spend. So yes, we, we got money. I did spend some money on marketing, but it was none of my own money. It was all straight from, from the, straight from the carrier, straight from the carrier. So right. yeah, that, that's what I mean, I guess. Cause yeah, I did seminars. Um, I did some things like that, but right. it, it wasn't like, okay, here, I'm going to fork out 20 grand of my own money to, you know, send out mailers or do Facebook leads. It, it wasn't so like that. That's a, that's a really good point because we have a lady from Humana named Heather what she did for this open enrollment is she would give a she would give us a thousand dollars like if we wanted to do a seminar right yep. or get leads she yep. would purchase that humana would literally purchase the leads like a thousand dollars worth of leads we just have to guarantee this is what she said she just wants us to make sure out off that thousand dollars we at least write 10 10 mepds from that yep right? and that's all you have to do for an agent that has never asked for carrier money all you need to do is say hey go to them with a plan yep. and say, Hey, this is my marketing strategy. If you can give me this, like, this is our close rate, whatever it is, or this is our 
expected close rate. If you give me X amount of dollars, I will give you X amount of enrollments. Yep. And it's as easy as that. You're getting money sent to your bank account. So, and so go ahead. Is, is that is that just the whole format you use? You weren't the whole. So the whole AEP, you were just using other people's money, not your money at all. No. So a lot of it was referrals. Um, okay. So we got a ton of just. So there's a carrier here in Idaho that does not have an internal sales team. Okay. And so we, you know, got really close to the people who take the inbound calls and we were getting, I probably got 60 to 70 live transfers just straight from the carrier because they knew who I was and they knew like th that's the other part of it is every time I got an email or, or anything like that, which is like, Hey, we had somebody call in, they want this, this, and that. I was very quick to respond, like within five minutes, say I'm on it. And then I would send them, thank you. You know, we were able to help John Smith get enrolled in XYZ MAPD or SUP or whatever it is. Right. Like, thank you so much for your help. It's starting a one, one effective or a December effective, whatever it was. So just follow up and just communication with the carriers is huge and just always meeting with them. Another thing that I did, um, I, I've talked about it before. It's called the, um, I'm pretty knowledgeable. I'll toot my own horn on the Medicare Medicaid arena. Right. Um, and so I go and do, I call it the do's and donuts. I bring donuts to these low income facilities, okay. and chocolate milk and coffee and stuff and juice and i do i call it the do's and donuts of medicare and medicaid so then i go do educational seminars it's not a sales seminar i go and do an educational seminar um i go knock doors i put flyers all over the entire apartment complex for a date um and then you know i i go again talk to the people invite them and then i do these seminars in their you know meeting rooms uh, and just educate and then i go around and i help and i don't even have to ask for basically appointments they're like hey can you please help me with this like i want these benefits i want this this and that and it's you know you're you're getting if you have you, you'll get an average of like 10 to 15 people yeah. and you'll you'll close 90 percent of them there um and then you'll get six more referrals from all their buddies that are in there that miss the the educational seminar and so it's just something that's like yeah you'll spend 40 bucks on juice and donuts but you're getting 10 enrollments so that's three it's grand no if they're if they're all already on an mapd you're yep. probably making closer four to five so it's just something that and i can post the flyer that i made for for those that want it if they're interested to just go and print off and I mean, we would love to see it, dude. I want to see it myself. So, so. <laughs> I, I think, and it's a really good point you're making, like for myself with the whole white glove thing, it was one relationship. Her name's Carrie. We met her at SWAT. My dad did. You yeah. had this relationship with, who was this again that you had this relationship with that you first built before you started using their money to to build your Medicare business? Pretty much. Uh, just some reps at, at Blue Cross. Exa exactly. So this is yeah. all, th just the, all these transactions happened off first you know, relationship and you were just setting the tone for us and these people. And that's how me and Colin literally start building our own businesses is literally just off the relationship in itself. Right. Yeah. Everything's yeah. relationship based in the business because your clients, even, right. If you're not building rapport in the beginning, you're straight to business. Well, they're not going to trust you. Right. Exactly. They're not, yeah. They're not going to like you. Yeah. And that's the thing when you go to ask them, yeah, you, you hit it on the head. If they don't trust and like you, you're not going to get the sale. That's why you guys are killing it. You and your dad and Jeff and everybody's killing it is because you're likable and you're, you know, you're the invested American. They trust you, dude. Like my dad, my dad says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's right. That's right. So, put it on, put it on the wall. Yeah, so it, it's just super important to be personable and, you know, it, it's 1 million percent a relationship business. Too many agents are so worried about the script. And it's just like, dude, you don't necessarily need the script. Scripts help. Like I love scripts. I, I use scripts. But if you're not being personable on the other side, people are going to see right through it. 
and you know on the other side of the phone if you do telesales or if you're on the other side of the table in person you're not going to have a great closing ratio dude like yep. just talk to people care about them ask questions yep. figure it out that way so yeah so um the thing i i know we kind of went through it the seminar part about it a little bit but i wanted to run through it again so obviously with the whole white glove these are the people that we run our whole seminars through um, we've been doing it for about, um, what was it, man? My dad would know probably October or November um, of this past year. So it's been great. The so really the only time I haven't seen a return was probably on one of the first ones I did. And that's because okay. obviously I was just kind of putting myself out there. Yeah. Right. You got to spend money to make money. And, and I was just kind of learning. But ever since that, I mean, I've seen crazy returns since then. Right. So what White Glove's doing here, guys, is obviously i'm paying per client so every client that shows up to these seminars it's costing me about 300 dollars a client or 300 dollars a household so if a husband and wife show up they register in it's 300 dollars, right if a single if a single you know grandma shows up it's going to be 300 dollars. if a single you know grandpa shows up it's going to be 300 dollars. it doesn't matter right but and there's usually or each seminar is probably about 15 to 15 to 20 people that usually show up right so we'll run the whole seminar. I have the whole PowerPoint. I don't think I have it right here with me. It's my dad's email. But um, next next show or whenever we get back on here to talk about this, I can run through the whole PowerPoint just to show you guys how it works. Yep. But we'll go over it. The whole seminar is called Tax-Free Retirement Seminar. And we're going to go over all the different touch points of retirement, Medicare, um, but mainly, you know, estate planning. So like wills and trusts, making sure that they, everybody has, you know, their retirement set up for when they pass away, right? Because majority of people, are at these seminars for what a legacy they want to make sure that they're leaving the people behind them you know set up not yeah. in a whole world of probate right that nobody yeah. wants to do probate so real, real quick do you have a lawyer there an estate planning attorney at the dinner or seminar so, there too okay giving this is them like 10 minutes to chat that's, a, that's such a great question so the past what the past five seminars colin we've had our, our attorney with us. And I didn't get to tell you this before the podcast, we jumped on like five or 10 minutes early, but I wanted to tell you this. So very, very big news here as well at the Investor American. So we ended up getting a whole new office space. And I was going to tell you this last night, but I know you were tied up with your kids. So we got a whole new office space, um, very big office on a fourth floor, got a nice view. We're actually in the office with our, with the, the law office. So now What's, what's going to be really cool is it's on a fourth floor. You come off the elevator, you turn left, you see the office, right? You walk in, there's a big reception area, right? So then you have your admin right here on the desk. Then you turn right. There's a right wing and a left wing, okay? But when you're looking straight forward after the reception area, there's a huge conference room right in front of you, right? So a really, really nice, spacey conference room that we'll is share. That a, with is that a shared? I was going to say, is that a shared yeah. conference room? Yeah. Nice. So like we'll set up the meetings and stuff. You know, if they have their own meeting, we'll have our own meeting. So like they have a meeting at nine o'clock. We'll have our yeah. sales meeting at 10 o'clock, right? On a Friday. Yeah. Just going yeah. Over the whole week. But you turn right, that's going to be our wing. There's about seven offices and the kitchen. So now we're going to have our own wing of the Invested American. They're going to have their own wing, right? The Furlong Law Firm. That's who we're working with. So now... Um, we always, even our office now, we'll welcome clients into the home or not into the home, into the office. And once we're done with them at the office, now what'll be cool is we can just send them over to the law firm for a will or trust now, because now we're getting like uh, killing two birds on one stone, right? So yeah. it, it's going to be really cool to see what uh, ends up transpiring with the whole thing, because uh, what me and me, what me and Jeff have, have already done. Um, okay. What me and Jeff have already done is. We've had two two sets of clients already get a trust from this law firm too. So from these seminars in themselves, we're also getting wills and trust done. And trusts are very very nice, um, just because it's all you know written out in a law in a law office. So now when someone does pass away, nobody can say anything because it's exactly done in legal document, right? Yeah. So that's going to be really cool. I'm really really pumped up about that. We're going to be moving in in March, so um, this month, but. Mid, mid to late March, which will be pretty cool. Very bigger, much bigger office too. But yeah. to the seminar point, um, obviously throughout the whole seminar, once once the seminar is over, we're going over all the retirement. Like I said, again, we're going to be booking appointments with all these people. Once we're done with the whole seminar, because we can't talk to everybody, right? Once yeah. we're done with the whole seminar, we all have these note cards, like I showed you before. We all have these note cards. We make sure we collect them from each client because they filled it out. So whatever, who we are, whoever we booked an appointment with, I'll write a note like right here, booked Monday at 9 a.m., right? Yeah. So then I'll go straight to my Google Calendar, plug it in my Google Calendar, 
and then boom, it's right there in the Google Calendar. So the next, the people that we didn't book through, through what I told you, White Glove, they have their own CRM. So if we, mo majority of them, we follow up with most of them, but the people that are interested, like I said, the AIR will follow up, but then we'll book appointments with everybody that showed up, try to book appointments with everyone that showed up and we'll call them literally every single day um, for the first week after the seminar, right? Because it's all okay. the follow up. You got to make sure you follow up with them. And what, what are what are you saying in these in these phone calls? Yeah, perfect, perfect, great question. Day. So what I'll say is, hey, uh, Mr. Jones, how are you doing today? Good, good. Hey, this is Alexander. I was a gentleman who was helping out and running the tax free retirement seminar that you were at. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So now there's already a level of sense of like trust built there a little bit because yeah. you know this guy's calling me. He was I remember this guy. He was running the seminar, right? So I'll say, yeah, I was just a gentleman around the tax for retirement seminar. How are you doing today, sir? Okay, great. Well, I wanted to make sure um, after the seminar, I know I don't think anyone really got to you, man. I wanted to make sure we can get to you and set, set you up a complimentary review. We can sit down with you 10 or 15 minutes, kind of go over your whole whole own um, situation with your retirement and see what better ways we can help assist you. Okay. So we'll, we'll say all that. So the, then, these are the people that you did not book. You're not calling the people that you booked every day. Right. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. I was confused. I thought yeah, you were so calling the people, people we booked every day. I was like, geez, that's yeah, yeah. a little overkill. The people that we booked every day, we are, or the people that we booked, I'm going to call them the day before the appointment just to confirm the appointment. Okay. That's it. No, I'm not blowing them up. There's no point yeah. in that. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, ain't no way I want this appointment. <laughs> <laughs> this guys guy's crazy. Like, yeah. But the the guys that we did, that were at the seminar I'm following up with, I would say that in itself. Once I'm done saying that, I wanted to make sure that we can get a time to sit down with you, give you the whole rundown about, you know, um, just a seminar if you had any extra questions, but we definitely want to have the opportunity to see if we can help you out. Just being brutally honest. That's all you can be is honest, right? Yeah. I was like, and then before he even responds, I'm going to kind of jump into my calendar. Hey, I have some availability. Um, we have some availability next week on Monday or Tuesday. If this seminar is on Thursday, you know, with, with that, you know, you have any ability? Well, I work, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Well, yeah. we can catch you even after work. We have a lot, a lot of evening appointments with these seminars because majority of people are still working. So, I mean, we can swing by the house around 5 30 or 6. I mean, it, it, is that going to be convenient for you, man? And then, you know, we'll see what he says. But usually yeah. we, we get quite a few appointments off there if people, because some people bolt out the door. So we want to make sure we follow up with those people too. But the people that don't show up in themselves, I feel like sometimes, and this is just me, I don't know how my dad and Jeff look at it, but sometimes the people that don't show up and the people that show up and we weren't able to book, sometimes the people that didn't show up are easier to book than the people that did show up and didn't book, right? Because, because they're they're still interested. I mean, they showed general interest first and they don't right. have the information. So yeah, I'm sure it is maybe just a little bit easier where you get, I call them when I do my seminars, I call them plate lickers. Like okay. it's, it's the people that just come to the seminar for the food. The yeah. guy had a dude that like came to the seminar, grabbed a whole gallon of chocolate milk, a whole box of donuts and just went back to his room. And it's just like, uh, all right. Like those people, man, those people, man, at yes. least pay me back for that, man. If you ain't gonna book the point <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, dude. Uh, but anyway, so do you guys get a lot of that or, or not as much? Um, honestly, not as much. Okay. Now that I think yeah, it's, about it's it, probably demographic too. They're just like the last seminar we had, there was we so we don't have donuts or anything. We just put snacks. So you'll walk in, we'll have a whole. Okay, so you're not doing you're not doing dinners. For no, 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 no. These aren't dinners. These are like in community centers, libraries, like library meeting rooms, um, and community centers. So what we'll and do? How, how many people are you getting to these? Man, fifteen to twenty every every single uh, every single. Really? Seminar. It's a pack. It's a packed house every seminar, bro. Yeah. Dang, because there, there's a couple um, agents that are doing them here, but they always do them at like high end restaurants. You can do that too, man. The thing but, is, I mean that it, that that makes your cost per acquisition way higher. Plus, sure. that's when you're getting the plate liquors of just like, oh, dude, like we're gonna go get uh, some freaking Ruth's Chris for free. <laughs> like, and yeah. what I feel like too, and, and you can correct. I want to see what your opinion is on this, but I feel like people are gonna be more you know, they're going to pay more attention when there's nothing in front of them besides the speaker. Right. Yes. So the people that run these dinner seminars, they're talking while they're eating dinner. I'm like, dude, what? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm focused on this nice prime steak, dude, more than I'm focused on you. Right. Yeah. So on well, the side conversations going on with the waitresses of getting my diet Coke and, you know, 
and it, 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 I, I feel like it kind of blows the whole seminar, bro. Like we're talking about what yeah. we're ordering from the menu, but I'm trying to I'm trying to speak on what's most important at hand, right? So that's yeah. why I love the model that we do because we'll have the register table right as you walk in. Then you take another table down. We'll have granola bars, you know, some snacks and waters. That's it. Yeah. So you guys are still providing a little bit of something. But... Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the number one goal is just to make sure we have something for the people because if we don't have anything, I feel like it would be a little weird. But um, I like that, man. Yeah. 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 So did you guys go to the library and are like, hey, this is an educational piece that we would like to do? Um, can we get your conference room booked for? Yeah, yeah. So day? White Glove does and that. Actually. Can you have the library like hang up flyers too to be like, hey, this? So we can, but the okay. and, and I don't. I'm not the one behind that usually sets up the whole seminar because White Glove and themselves are the ones who set it all up. Oh, okay, that's so. Neat. We White Glove actually call like their own home office calls these libraries, calls these community centers. And they're looking for a spot that we can have our seminar at. So we we pretty much pay like a what is it a two or three hundred dollar fee for the venue, um, okay. just just from all the work that they do to get get us in the door, right, and get get us you know okay. in the meeting. I room. was I was gonna ask that. Thanks for talking about that. I was gonna say, is that like built into the three hundred dollar per household fee, or is that an additional fee? Um, that's an additional fee. It's two or three hundred, but I mean. You know, they do all the grunt work to have the whole seminar set up. I think they, I'm not, I have to ask my dad if they put out flyers. I've never seen any flyers, but I'm sure we could do that. No problem. Yeah. But um, just because we have some walk-ins too, which is pretty cool. So I've had as well, and I didn't make this point in, in the seminar, you'll have the people that show up and you pay for them. Right. For example, there's usually how it works, Colin, is there's like 30 something people that registered, but there's only 15 or 20 something people that actually walked in, showed up. Yeah. We pay for the people that walked in and showed up but we don't have to pay for the people that didn't show up and still registered. So now we pretty much have free leads yeah. that we can call these people on and book them. Right. Like I said, again, sometimes booking people that didn't show up, then showing up is sometimes better because you know, they, they, they put their name out there as a register and they're interested in what's going on because they may have a problem in their own retirement. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's something else in itself that, that really changed the game up and beyond it. I mean, I've sold two, from what I know from doing these seminars, because it's myself, my dad and my dad and Jeff started doing October, November. I started doing it in what, December or no, no, I did my first one late November. So I've noticed and I've done two, I've done two more annuities from referrals from clients that I've done annuity before. Right. So like I said, the referral game is changing the game because every single time we sit down with these people, I'm still trying to, because I don't want to push them as much because They've helped me out a ton. I've helped them out a ton. And yeah. I don't want to be too pushy with this, these type of clients for referrals. Yeah. Right? So I'll be kind of more, you know, back a little bit and ask for some referrals and kind of do ask a couple more questions with referrals. But um, the, the referrals that these people will give you, like I'm saying, all these pe friends are usually have the same exact goals and, you know, income. Cause it's a, like I said again earlier, it's like a buddy from work or something. They have an IRA or 401k. Yeah. Now with, now with another high prospect client that's opening, and there's already a level of trust built with that referral. Why? Because I just helped out his friend, right? Yeah. It's all it's all in one line together. They're like, okay, yeah, this those guy those guys are ten times easier to close too. Exactly, bro. Like, oh. Yeah. Exactly. You, then you, it's way easier to close um, than like a just a first sit seminar appointment, like a new seminar appointment. It's way easier because I already helped their friend out. They know yeah. that I'm going to try my best to help them out and protect them in any way I can. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing, my light's wigging out here. Um, one thing that I would, would mention to you um, to try to do, because I've done this with Medicare, um, yeah. is when you are sitting down with one of these retirees, um, see if you can get it or if they haven't retired yet. Just ask them like, hey, like, is it possible um, that I could get with your HR manager and do a retirement seminar for all Ooh. of your like the retirees here in the next six months? And if you get in with these group, um, these groups and just say, hey, look, you know, we'll come do a free seminar for and you get with the HR manager and just say, hey, look, you know, this is how we can help you as well. Um, 
Because okay. if they're somebody who's over 65 and they're and the group is paying for their health insurance, they're overpaying on that. And so it's like, hey, look, we'll come in, we'll save you a couple thousand dollars on your group health insurance. Um, we'll save your your employee money too, switching them to Medicare, but we'll also do a retirement seminar to say, hey, look, this is what you can do um, to prepare best for retirement, to roll over your 401k, set up a will trust, yada, yada, yada. So that's such a great point, Colin, because you think about it, right? Up and beyond like them coming to retirement, right? If they retire, they're done getting matched on their 401k. So there's no point in leaving your 401k there, right? Yeah, if you're not exactly matched, you need to do yeah. something with it, right? Yeah, you got to roll it over. Yeah. So yeah. that's dude, that's a great point. I've never thought of that. So maybe I should yeah. this guy that me and Jeff had, maybe we should talk to the guy and say, Hey, can we talk to your HR to see if we can host a seminar? That's yep. a great idea, dude. I've yep. never because think about the unload like the godly amount of referrals that you're going to get. And then the because that's what, that's what we do with our Medicare too. And do you so. think they would charge? Do you think they would charge us to have an open seminar? Even if they did, I wouldn't care, but no dude, you're, you're saving them money. That's yeah. how you go in there. Is like, cause that, that's how I've done it in the past is, Hey, look, you know, cause Great. I'm in all of these um, networking groups. And so that's how I like say, Hey, look, a good referral for me would be an HR manager, yada, yada, yada. What you need to do is you go into that HR manager, go to lunch with them, do whatever, and be like, hey, look, how many people do you have that are over 65 that are still working? Usually those people are costing the group health plan like $1,000 to $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. If you can say, hey, look, if we can switch those people over to Medicare for 174 bucks a month, you still pay that as the employer, but I just saved you $1,500 a month. For one employee and you know whatever yeah the, the numbers are that way plus i'm getting the the employee slash your future client a zero dollar health plan a zero dollar deductible and then you throw in some um, hospital indemnity plans too for 40 50 bucks that the employer is paying for yeah. dude the the employee stoked the employer's stoked, you're stoked, but then you're also coming in and saying, yeah, we also talk about retirement 401ks, Dude, that's IRAs, money, bro. all of that too. So if you anyways. guys, or as you guys watch, go back and watch this um, of calling that, that I've never thought of that. I'm definitely going to run that by my dad. And I think we should break that down because also um, in asking that to the client, I mean, they could have a little pushback, but if you have, for example, 10 clients, I, I bet you at least two of them will let you come in and talk to the talk to the hr absolutely the only people i've ever gotten denied was when they worked for the government because the government can't can't have a single person do that yeah so that's the only time i've ever been denied so that's crazy i mean free seminar sounds good to me bro i mean yeah because usually yeah, say say you'll bring in lunch one day like so you just true. just yeah. every quarter or every six months Hey, who's your retirees or who's your T65s, people turning 65 in the next six months? We'll come in, even if it's four or five people, we'll come in, we'll do a seminar, we'll buy lunch, and we'll just educate. I think the buy lunch is the key factor too, dude. That, that's that's yeah. a really good point because you're you're bringing obviously something that could, uh, I mean, everybody yeah. could have lunch, you know, and then- and you, you, call, you call them lunch and learns. It's just like, hey, look, we're, we'll do a lunch and learn of a, of a retirement seminar, just that's Medicare- so Social security, you know, wills, trusts, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do that with. So. I mean, they, these seminars that we go, uh, and if I'm splitting it, it's about nine, eight to nine grand for each seminar, or not each, but two. If I do two seminars in a day, it's going to be eight to nine grand. So I'm really going to end up paying about four grand or forty five hundred for a seminar, you know, yeah. or a, two two uh, two seminars a day. So I mean, that whole strategy and everything, bro. I'm definitely implementing that. Um, that's just amazing, bro. I, I can't, I can't express that enough. I appreciate that, that advice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see who stayed the whole show to, to get that little golden nugget. Dude, but honestly, talk about the nugget, the nugget of the show right there, dude, for real. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. It's all so, about, like I said, to make, again, man, it's all about the relationship and asking, you know, just continue to keep asking for the referral with these high, these high net worth clients, because as you keep doing it, you're going to build your business astronomically. I mean, you will yep. keep going in everything you're doing. Colin, I mean, great show, bro. Do you have any last, you know, last words for 
you know, maybe another Not nugget even. you got in your sleeve. <laughs> I, I keep some close. I keep some <laughs> close. That that's a pretty big nuggie right there that I'll that I'll leave for the people. Cool, but, cool, cool, cool. Um, no, dude, great shows, great chatting with you. Let's go have a great weekend. Dude, yeah. Happy, happy early birthday to my wife. Beautiful. There wife, we go. Kaylee, Kaylee let's she, go. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. early birthday. So and her, birthday's, her birthday's tomorrow. So we're going to. Okay, cool, bro. Well, tell her I said happy birthday. Again, yeah. shout out Bo walking. What? Yeah, dude. Freaking stud That's got to be one dude. of the most exciting things, bro. Come on, another <laughs> week right there. Yeah, but, it, it's a big win. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, okay, shout out Medicare Machine Factory, Joshua Youngs. I forgot to shout, uh, shout you out, bro. We love you. Um, shout out Joe and Tony, man. We, we are very grateful for the opportunity of you guys continuing to let us run the Friday Fuel Show. It's almost, I mean, sooner or later, it'll be coming up on a year here in the next couple months. So, I mean, that yeah, that's yeah. freaking crazy even to think about that too. So, also as well, we're trying the new format. Adam and Donnie aren't on because of, you know, we're trying to do run in twos, kind of keep it more you know, intimate one-on-one -on -one type of thing and, you know, more, more conversational because with the four of us, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's always hard to get a word out sometimes because Donnie may take the floor, Colin, may, I may take the floor. I Someone take the floor take the too floor. much all the time. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we appreciate you guys. We will see you guys next Friday with a guest. Um, so we'll, we'll figure that out and then we'll get with you guys next Friday. We'll see you guys soon. Go kill it today.